You're listening to In Clear Focus, fresh perspectives on the business of advertising, produced weekly by Big Eye. Hello, I'm your host, Adrian Tennant, VP of Insights at Big Eye, an audience focused, creative driven, full service advertising agency. We're based in Orlando, Florida, but serve clients across the United States and beyond. Thank you for joining us. According to the latest annual Infinite Dial report from Edison Research and Triton Digital, the number of U.S. consumers ages 12 and up who listen to podcasts on a monthly basis continues to rise, up to 37% this year. While podcast listening has increased across all age groups, more young people between the ages of 12 and 34 listen than any other age group. The survey of more than 1,500 Americans ages 12 and above was conducted in January and February of this year, so before the COVID-19 crisis mandated stay in place and social distancing. The study found that 24% of total respondents reported listening to a podcast in the week prior to the survey, up two percentage points from the same time last year. But for comparison, in 2013, only 7% of Americans listen to podcasts weekly. The amount of time spent listening to podcasts has also increased. Among those who listened to a podcast in the previous week, respondents spent 6 hours and 39 minutes on average engaging with podcasts. And 6 in 10 respondents who listened to podcasts in the previous week listened to at least two while close to one-fifth reported listening to six to ten podcasts during that time. A separate study from Westwood One and Audience Insight shows that the largest number of podcast listeners in the US access them through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Research from Nielsen found that heavy podcast listeners are more likely than others to listen away from home, either at work, in transit, or other places such as the gym. Amid the array of media options consumers have available to them, podcasts are portable and are a constant companion when viewing a screen isn't an option. Smartphones are driving podcast engagement, as more than 36 million Americans now access podcast content this way. The heaviest podcast listeners are also most engaged when they're away from home. However, smart speakers are playing a bigger role in growing podcast audiences. Across platforms, smart speakers are more likely to attract audiences of more than one, which, from an impression perspective, is a key insight for advertisers. To help us understand advertising in podcasts, our guest this week is Stephen Pickens, Director of Sales for AdvertiseCast. I met Stephen at an event called PodFest, which was held in Orlando at the beginning of March, just before the enforced closure of hotels and resorts here in Central Florida. Stephen has spent his career growing startup direct response advertising agencies focused largely on national TV media buying for brands such as PokerStars, Zulily, and NordVPN. Last year, Stephen decided to follow his passion into the podcast space, joining AdvertiseCast, a podcast ad network that allows thousands of podcasters to monetize their content by partnering with major brands such as HelloFresh, HomeAdvisor, BetterHelp, and more. Welcome to In Clear Focus, Stephen. Thanks for having me, Adrian. Happy to be here. Could you tell us a little about AdvertiseCast? The podcast space is pretty fragmented. There are thousands of uh, shows out there. So from an advertiser perspective, if you wanted to add podcasts to your media mix, it can be a very daunting task. And on the other side of the coin, from a podcaster perspective, if you want to monetize your content, you may not really know where to start in terms of sourcing that demand. So we stand in the middle of thousands of shows and hundreds of advertisers. uh, And we've got a really nice balance of supply and demand within our network to make sure that the podcast uh, ad buying process is super smooth, efficient, and streamlined. So Stephen, what does your role with AdvertiseCast entail? Yeah, so I'm the director of sales and I work with a number of advertisers to determine what the best approach for them is in terms of podcast advertising. Uh, So they'll come to us and uh, say, you know, we really want to get into podcast advertising. How do we do that? Uh, So we'll determine how best to reach their target audience within whatever their budget constraints are. 
And within our platform that we've developed, we can put together uh, proposals for them to consider and then go ahead and execute the campaign. In what kinds of ways is advertising within podcasts different from other types of media? Yeah, so I like to think of it as word of mouth marketing, but at scale. So if you have a friend that recommends you try a particular product or service, it comes with a level of authenticity because you trust them. And it's really similar to podcast advertising in that way, because at least in terms of me, the shows that I listen to, I really trust the hosts. So when they take some time out of their show to explain a product to me and ultimately endorse it, it comes with a tremendous amount of weight. And oftentimes we'll send our hosts samples of the product or a free trial of the service so that they can actually speak to their personal experience with it. So it's a really high quality way to share your message with a very engaged audience. Can you explain the main ways that ads are actually inserted into podcasts? Yeah, so podcast hosts will uh, record typically around 60 seconds for the message and endorsement, and they'll insert it into either the beginning as a pre-roll or the middle as a mid-roll, and then they'll distribute nationally to all the different podcast player platforms. So it's largely been a national media play. More recently, we've developed the ability to dynamically insert so that you can target geographically, demographically, and and on interests as well. So you're saying that we are at a point when ads can be inserted dynamically into podcast streams to target listeners based on their data in real time. So I'm thinking of targeting based on their demographic and geographic data, in addition to maybe their tastes in music or podcast genres. Yeah, that's exactly right. And this is one of the more exciting areas of growth that we've seen in recent months. So podcasts have you know, mostly been a national media play. And so it's left a lot of you know, geographically targeted advertisers out of the space. But with dynamic insertion, we can you know, target geographically, demographically by interests. And so given that the CPMs are also a little bit lower with this dynamic approach, it opens up podcast advertising to a lot of smaller players, which is really exciting. We've seen a ton of interest for geo-targeting within podcasts. Okay, we'll certainly get into how pricing works, uh, but you just mentioned CPM. So for listeners that don't know, can you just give a description of CPM? Yeah, so CPM is cost per mil. I'm not sure why the industry decided to use that terminology because it's I believe it's based on the Latin term for a thousand. So to keep it simple, it's cost per thousand listeners or cost per thousand viewers. It's a standard metric to determine price between different shows and, and different campaigns. So yeah, with the with programmatic or dynamic approach to podcasting, it's a little bit cheaper. But with the host right approach, it's a little bit more expensive just because it's a, a higher quality kind of engagement. And those CPMs can range you know, anywhere from $25 to $35 for a host right campaign. And for a programmatic campaign with dynamic insertion, it's typically around $15. Now, Stephen, you obviously listen to a lot of podcast ads. So for the creative directors and copywriters listening to this, what makes for a really great engaging podcast advertisement? So just the authenticity needs to be there. Oftentimes when we set up a campaign, we won't give a script to the podcast host. We'll just give them bullet points. We call them talking points, and this allows them to craft their own message in a style that the audience is accustomed to. And you know, oftentimes we'll send the host, like I mentioned earlier, a sample of the product or the ability to try a service out for free so that they can actually tell a story about their experience with it, which is really way more effective than you know, kind of a, a rote speech. Now, for the media planners and buyers listening, how does advertising on podcasts compare with other forms of media? For example, you just mentioned you know, selling on the basis of number of ad impressions. But do you also support cost per action or cost per acquisition models? So at this time, we don't. There's such a high demand for the listener's attention. There's really not a lot of demand for cost per acquisition pricing models. So we base it all on CPM. And in the case of podcasts, an impression is synonymous with a download. Now, Advertised Cast represents around 1,800 podcasts, which reach more than 70 million listeners each month. What are some of the differences you hear between podcasts produced by large entertainment or media companies and those from smaller independent producers? That's what's so great about the podcast space. There's such a wide breadth of content 
You've got uh, some really large podcasts out there that have really high production value uh, hosted by celebrities and media personalities. And then you've got a very long tail of independent podcasters that you know are producing out of their basement or out of their garage. <laughs> and that is not to say that their content is not as good. Sometimes it's much higher quality just because it's so authentic. You have access to you know experts from many different fields, uh, burgeoning comedians. It's really just a tremendous space because there is such a crazy variety of content for you to uh, access that we didn't have access to previously. What are the most popular genres or podcast categories in Advertise Cast's network? Uh, so news is really popular. Sports prior to the coronavirus situation <laughs> were really popular. Obviously, when sports get canceled, people talking about sports don't have much to discuss. True crime is really popular. You may be familiar with the serial podcast that kind of put true murder or true crime, that genre on the map. There's a ton out there. There's really a, a, a podcast for every conceivable topic. What are some of the things that Advertise Cast considers when it's considering representing a specific podcast? I mean, how important are listener numbers or downloads or social media engagement? Yeah, so we just have a minimum of 2,500 downloads per episode. We are open to working with pretty much any genre, any kind of podcast. We are true believers in the space. So we want you know, to bring content to everybody. We want a very wide net for the podcast space. So really the only thing that we look at is uh, a minimum number of downloads such that it would be attractive to advertisers because we're really serving, you know, both podcasters and making sure that they can monetize their content, but also advertisers and making sure that they have an attractive audience to reach. So Stephen, what are your favorite shows? Give us two or three examples of what you like to listen to. So I love uh, history and I love economics. Dan Carlin's Hardcore History is a really amazing show. He, he hasn't put out many episodes recently, but I encourage everybody that has an interest in history to check that out. The episodes are about four hours long, so you have to be one of the long podcast listeners <laughs> to enjoy it. And I also enjoy Macro Voices, which has a lot of kind of heterodox economic thinkers uh, talking about things that are going on in the world of uh, macroeconomics. Well, wow, that's super specific. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I also am a huge fan of Joe Rogan's podcast. That was the the first, you know, podcast that kind of uh, introduced me to the space. And his show is super popular. He he has a a ton of irreverent characters on and discusses topics that you can't really hear anywhere else. So he deserves a ton of credit for putting podcasts on the map. He regularly appears as the top show in terms of total listens. Correct. Yeah, I mean, he's a media titan now. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back after this message. I'm Dana Cassell, Big Eyes Senior Strategist. Every week, In Clear Focus addresses topics that impact our work as marketing professionals, often inspired by data points reported in consumer research studies. At Big Eye, we put audiences first. For every engagement through our own research, we develop a deep understanding of our clients' prospects and customers, analyzing their attitudes, behaviors, and motivations. We distill this data into actionable insights to inspire creative brand building and persuasive activation campaigns with strategic, cost-efficient media placements. If you'd like to know more about how to put Big Eye's audience-focused insights to work for your brand, please contact us. Email info at bigeyeagency.com. Welcome back. We're talking to Stephen Pickens of AdvertiseCast about advertising within podcasts. Now, podcast listening outside the home is obviously on hold for many people now, given the shelter-in-place orders that we're experiencing due to the coronavirus pandemic. What impact do you think being homebound will have on podcast listening time in the future? So I think people are obviously, their schedules are, are changing, uh, given that they aren't commuting uh, so we have seen a little bit of a dip in listens, but you could attribute that largely to some of the drop off in listening to sports podcasts, as opposed to behavioral changes in terms of commuting. But I think people will get back to consuming the content that they love. I know I was you know, talking to my brother earlier this week, and he said, I just had to turn off the TV. I'm tired of looking at this coronavirus coverage. And he went back to revisit some of the podcasts that he had neglected, given that he had, hadn't been commuting for a couple of weeks. So I think people will gravitate back to the content that they've come to enjoy. In what kinds of ways are you seeing COVID-19 impact your clients? 
So it really depends on the category. I've had a few clients postpone their campaigns, uh, whether it be because they were promoting a conference, which got canceled, or if they're seeing some sort of slump in sales demand. But for the most part, we've been pleasantly surprised by the demand that still is coming in. You know, when life throws you a curveball, people adjust. So whether it's direct to consumer brand that delivers products directly to people's homes, they're actually going to see an increase in activity. We have, you know, some clients that promote home Wi-Fi networking. You know, they're definitely seeing an increase in demand. It really depends on the category. And, uh, you know, Luckily enough for the podcast space, there's still a very strong audience there that you can reach and and make sure that you're still staying top of mind for those consumers. COVID-19 and stay-in-place orders are impacting people around the world. According to research from Global Web Index, almost one-fifth, 18% of consumers in the US say they may now subscribe to Netflix for the first time. Disney Plus follows in popularity with 14% of consumers saying they don't currently subscribe, but are now considering it. And then music and audio platforms follow closely behind with Spotify at 11% and Amazon Prime Music at 10%. It's interesting to see Spotify there as they've really focused on podcasts this year. As you know, Stephen, behind the scenes, Spotify has acquired some major podcast networks, including Gimlet Media podcast and the podcast creation app, Anchor. What's your perspective on podcasts potentially being exclusively available within Spotify's walled garden rather than across multiple platforms, as is currently the case for most podcasts out there? Yeah, so there's a couple of points I'd like to raise here. First of all, you know, I'm not a big fan of walled gardens. I think podcasts have somewhat of a democratizing force behind them, not only in terms of, you know, the content that you may not be able to consume on mainstream media platforms, but also just the barriers to entry are very low. So the the wider we make that net, the better. It's going to be good for everybody, the listener, the advertiser, and the podcaster. And you also mentioned that consumers are Uh, moving more towards streaming services, which I find to be really interesting because I spent most of my career in the national TV space. And we were, you know, always watching the subscriber numbers and, you know, the Nielsen ratings with bated breath (laughs) as it would kind of slowly decline over time as people moved more towards consuming media on demand through smart TVs and things like that. So what I find really interesting about the coronavirus situation is that it may force a paradigm shift that otherwise would have taken many, many years to occur. When people are staying at home and maybe they're getting tired of watching news coverage of the virus and they certainly don't have live sports to watch, uh, both of those things, live news and live sports, are kind of the anchor that TV has relied upon. And now that those two things, you know, behavior and consumption might be shifting around them due to this virus, people may find that they don't need to subscribe to their cable anymore. And maybe they'll just opt to go with Netflix, Disney Plus, and you know other subscription packages through their Apple TV or Roku's. So I think it'll be really interesting to watch whether or not subscriber numbers plateau, decline, increase as a result of the situation. Definitely something to watch closely. Do you see any positives emerging from our current situation, say, on the podcast production side of things? Well, I mean, it's difficult to try to <laughs> find a silver lining in a you know global depression pandemic situation. But being an optimistic person that I am, you know, you're always trying to look for the upside. And given that you know people are changing their behavior and adjusting to you know this this massive disruption and people's normal everyday habits, there's always opportunity in that. And I think given that podcasting is so flexible we can adjust, we can optimize. Uh, In fact, over the past few weeks, we've introduced several coronavirus themed shows on our platform (laughs) and the listenership is growing dramatically. So I think it would be pretty difficult for other legacy media to adapt to an ever-changing world the way that podcasts can. I certainly think it spurs creativity and innovation. There's no question. Yeah, absolutely. If listeners want to know more about AdvertiseCast, where can they find resources? So you can go to AdvertiseCast.com. We have a ton of great resources there. Uh, You can reach out to me directly, Stephen at AdvertiseCast.com. Stephen is spelled with a PH. And we'd be happy to speak more about how we might be able to help you. Stephen, thank you very much for being our guest today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. Take care. My thanks to our guest this week, Stephen Pickens, Director of Sales with AdvertiseCast. 
You can find our show notes with links to resources on the InClear Focus page at bigeyeagency.com under Insights. Just click on the button marked Podcast. Please consider subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast player. And if you have an Amazon Echo device, you can use the InClear Focus skill to add the podcast to your flash briefing. Thank you for listening to InClear Focus, produced by Big Eye. I've been your host, Adrian Tennant. Until next week, stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs>